Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning after one of the quickest Supreme Court nomination proceedings in modern times, what's next for Judge Amy Coney Barrett? Outside with live cam, the cold is here, maybe some drizzle, but is there anything else falling out there right now? We'll check in with Mike Osterhage and keep tabs on radar this morning, but boy, things have changed. Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday, October 27th, and it is here, the grilled cheese and soup weather we've been waiting for. I locked that in last night. I was excited about yes. it. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, the whole grocery order for this week is really hinging on <laughs> on what to eat during these cooler temperatures. Big bowl of oatmeal or something like that. Nice yes. something, as my mom always says, put some fuel in the furnace this morning because, yes. yep, it is cold out there. Allow yourself a little extra time to warm up the car this morning. It's also breezy. And, yeah, there are a couple of uh, sprinkly showers. I didn't see any, any damp roads coming into work this morning. There is nothing showing up on radar here in town, but we'll show you that in a moment. First of all, these temperatures, 44 here in town about 30 degrees colder than what it was at this time yesterday. 35 in Lost Maples, 43 up the road in Canyon Lake. There are wind chills to deal with. It feels like 28 degrees right now in Lost Maples, 38 here in town. 36 is the wind chill in Balverde. And we've got some pretty good winds out of the north, about 10, 15 miles per hour. And then the gusts on top of that, 22 at the airport, 24 in uh, Spotford. And yeah, there are a couple of sprinkles being picked up on radar right now. Even, oh, just to say right around Bernie there, almost crossing I-10. Even a couple down here in uh, Wilson County. And yep, that is some pink. There is a little frozen precipitation temperature right now is right at freezing in Rock Springs. Obviously, the ground is very, very warm, but uh, yeah, there may be a little bit of uh, call it some chunky rain out there in northwest portions of the hill country. All that is sliding up to the north, so we'll continue to have a couple of showers and it looks like things may start to pick up as far as rain later on. Everything is on the low side, mold and ragweed and temperatures pretty much going to be staying right here right around low 40s, upper 30s, couple of sprinkles around here, very breezy, northerly wind, 15, 25 miles per hour, kind of some gusts throughout the day and only 52 degrees later on today. Lots of clouds, breezy conditions. Again, a good grilled cheese and soup. It's not going to warm up anytime soon. We got another very cold morning in store and then some gorgeous weather leading in toward the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo still in the short sleeves. Always in the short sleeves. <laughs> right now, this doesn't get cold enough here. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, still uh, no issues, uh, moving along fairly well. However, as Mike was pointing out, there could be some problems later on due to the weather. 604 Kyle Seal, uh, you can see a little bit of moisture there on the lens, but uh, take a look, 35 at Topper Wine. Pretty good indication that the roads down there are slick, so be careful with those turns, those curves, uh, those long ramps. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas, well ahead of those long turns, just like right here. I-10 at Woodlawn. Remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. After one of the quickest nomination proceedings in modern times, the Senate voted to confirm Amy Comey Burnett, Barrett excuse me, to the Supreme Court last night. The 52-48 vote felt largely along party lines. As seen as Daryl Forges report, Senator Susan Collins of Maine was the only GOP senator to break ranks and vote nay with the Democrats. The nomination of Amy Coney Barrett of Indiana to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. Judge Amy Coney Barrett joining the highest court in the land. It is the job of a judge to resist her policy preferences. The contentious appointment comes amid vocal protests on the steps of the Supreme Court, both for and against her confirmation. The Senate's fast tracking of Barrett's confirmation solidifies a six to three conservative majority. In response, some opponents suggested expanding the size of the Supreme Court. I don't want to pack the court. I don't want to change the number. I don't want to have to do that. But if all of this rule breaking is taking place, what does the majority expect? Barrett joins the Supreme Court as the justices are ready to take action on a number of important petitions, including several related to next week's election. The potential conflict of interest is a major concern for Democrats. In Donald Trump, we have a president who has openly stated that he needs Judge Barrett on the Supreme Court to cast a crucial vote if cases arising out of a disputed election reach the court. In defense, Republicans point to her qualifications and her integrity. She is a staggering 
academic mind. She is incredibly honest and forthright. In Washington, I'm Daryl Forges. Here at home, San Antonio is beginning to see a rise in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and the positivity rate. The local positivity rate is now at 6.9%. It was 5.8% a week ago. Our seven-day rolling average is also up to 192 cases per 24 hours. And our risk level has gone up from low to the moderate level. No new deaths were reported, but there was a jump in hospitalizations. 248 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez tells the community to not let their guard down as other parts of Texas are dealing with a dramatic rise in cases. El Paso's situation has gotten so bad they've had to fly patients to other cities for care, including right here in San Antonio. So far, we have about five patients. El Paso also under a curfew to try to prevent cases from spreading further. According to the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, the plan is to transfer 15 to 20 patients to cities like San Antonio, Austin, Houston, and Dallas over the next few days. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers still need your help finding those responsible for the murder of Eric Mendoza. That crime happened just over 10 years ago on October 21st, 2010 in the 5000 block of Village Path. During the incident, residents heard several gunshots and the sound of a vehicle speeding off. Mendoza was found shot in his vehicle and died at the scene. Crime Stoppers now guaranteeing a $20,000 reward if you have any information that leads to an arrest. That number to call, 210-224-STOP. 436, 44 degrees out there. 44 degrees, what a change. And still ahead on GMSA, the founder of a secretive so-called sex cult is set to be sentenced today and could be facing up to life in prison. And it hasn't ended yet. Quick moving wildfires overnight have caused thousands to flee their homes in the state of California. And taking a look out with live cam, refreshing 44 degrees, especially if you like the cold weather. Uh, either way, be prepared today to wear that jacket when you leave, and you're going to want to keep it pretty much all day. We're going to check with Mike to see what else we can expect this week. Making other headlines this morning, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper are in India to drive the Trump administration's anti-China message exactly a week ahead of the American presidential elections. In talks with their Indian counterparts, Pompeo and Esper are signing an agreement expanding military satellite information sharing. The talks will also highlight cooperation between Washington and New Delhi with an eye toward countering China. Just hours before the meeting, the Trump administration also notified Congress of plans for a $2 billion sale of Harpoon missile systems to nearby Taiwan. It's the second major arms sale in two weeks to the island that Beijing regards as a renegade province. Fast moving wildfires in Southern California have forced thousands to flee their homes. Utility company Southern California Edison said its equipment may have sparked a wildfire that forced evacuation orders for more than 100,000 people and seriously injured two firefighters. Powerful winds across the state prompted power to be cut to hundreds of thousands to prevent just such a possibility. A smoky fire exploded in size to over 7,000 acres after breaking out around dawn in Orange County, south of Los Angeles. Gusts pushed flames along brushy ridges in Silverado Canyon and near houses in the city of Irvine, which is home to about 280,000 people. Hurricane Zeta, the 27th named storm in a very busy Atlantic season, has made landfall on the Caribbean coast of the eastern Yucatan Peninsula, an area popular with tourists. The National Hurricane Center said Zeta came ashore with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. Zeta expected to lose some of its oomph while crossing the peninsula before regaining hurricane strength in the Gulf of Mexico later today. It's likely to make landfall tomorrow night somewhere along the central U.S. Gulf Coast. Our hurricane watch is posted from Morgan City, Louisiana to the Mississippi, Alabama state line. Time now is 442 and a cold 44 degrees. Coming up on GMSA, a closer look at whether an air purifier can protect you from coronavirus. Also next, it's sentencing day for an alleged sex cult leader. We're going to have a first look at what punishment he could face. In this morning's GMA First Look, Keith Ranieri, founder of secretive self-help group Nexium, will be sentenced facing up to life in prison for his role in the so-called sex cult. Prosecutors say Ranieri, known as Vanguard to his followers, was a con man and predator who used blackmail to force women to be his slaves and have sexual relationships with him. 
Ranieri hadn't spoken publicly since he was convicted of sex trafficking, racketeering, and conspiracy charges last year. Keith Ranieri. An inmate at a federal prison. But this weekend, with the help of followers who still support him, he released a podcast from behind bars saying he's just trying to do good. In this particular case, I'm given a spotlight that is far greater than my personhood. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what Keith Ranieri's alleged victims and supporters are saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Can an air purifier protect you from the coronavirus? We're talking about the kind of machine you can buy for a room in your house. 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris looks at what they can and what they can't do. Air purifiers. They can keep dust and smoke and other allergens at bay. But what if someone in your home is sick? Can an air purifier help? Consumer Reports Chief Science Officer says the answer isn't a simple yes or no. For an air purifier to be effective, it must be able to consistently draw enough air to reduce the amount of particles which contain the virus that persist in the air. The HEPA filters in most residential air purifiers are certified to capture 99.97% of particles that are 0.3 micron in diameter. But the filters also capture both smaller and larger particles even more efficiently, including the coronavirus. But if someone in your home is sick, the air purifier should be near them, isolated in a separate room. Even then, it's not a cure-all. The faster an air purifier can exchange air in a room, successfully passing the air through its filter, the better its chances are of capturing those virus-laden particles. Even then, it's not going to eliminate all the particles in the room, nor will the filter capture viruses that have landed on surfaces. In, the room. in Consumer Reports test, this $830 Blue Air was the best and fastest, but it's pricey. For less money, they recommend this Honeywell model. It got excellent ratings at high speed, very good at lower speed. An air purifier is not a replacement for wearing a mask, distancing, or washing your hands. And remember, just opening up a window and letting the fresh air in can help clear the air. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. May not want to open the window this morning, though. <laughs> no, definitely not today. And keep them closed while you're driving as well. It's going to be cold out there. I, although I will admit, I slept with the window cracked last night and put the extra blanket on. Man, the pull to stay under those covers was strong <laughs> this morning. I bet. Yeah, can you imagine uh, if you have uh, either leather or vinyl seats and you go out this morning and then drive around with your windows down? Yeah. I'll wake you up by the time you get to oh, work. Yeah. How was it, Marcus? <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> Still need coffee, though. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, we do have an accident. This is not on the highway. However, it's on a very busy street. A motor vehicle pedestrian accident, 3900 block of Thousand Oaks. That's going to be just east of Wetmore Drive in Thousand Oaks. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that accident. Other areas, not too bad there. Tented wood, uh, woodlawn there. You see where the upper and lower levels come back together. Definite evidence that the moisture is out there and on the roads. No problems there. Four tenant military and six no Ford Houseman. Still quiet out there. Mike, when I left the house this morning, wipers were on for just a moment. Yeah, a couple little uh, little sprinkles out there, and it's not going to amount to too awfully much, but it'll just be enough to help kind of keep things chilly, you know, cloudy skies, windy conditions, and yeah, but it was beautiful. Some areas did see a little bit of sunshine right after the front moved through. Uh, there were a couple of glints here and there. Came through slightly ahead of schedule yesterday. It was about mid-afternoon. I know when I walked out of the station about 2, it was like just humid still, and then... Temperature dropped down about 10, 15 degrees initially after that front kept dropping down and the winds kept picking up. And yeah, it's a mm, boy, it's a nice morning out there, but do definitely uh, bundle up. 38 degrees is the wind chill here in town. 28 Lost Maples, 36 in Bulverde. Feels like uh, 31 degrees over there, just up uh, I 10 toward Bernie Stage. And yeah, there are just a couple little light sprinkles. Got a few of them now showing up right here around Atascosa, Wilson County, sliding up to the north. So some of those will be moving through town, so we'll have some uh, damp spots there. And yes, that is a little bit of frozen precipitation way out uh, northwest portions of the Hill Country, northern Valverde County, and sort of a, a gee whiz thing. Obviously, the ground is still very, very warm, just that the air is obviously really cold. Like I said, uh, freezing temperatures are being reported right now in Rock Springs, and also, uh, relatively speaking, a lot of humidity. So anything that is falling is really 
reaching the ground. It's not evaporating and there may be call it chunky rain out there and then a few uh, sprinkles out to the west around Del Rio, Brackettville as well. And this computer model I think does a pretty good job. Now it tends to kind of broad brush, but we'll have some scattered light showers around here. And yeah, there could be a couple little spots. There's some cold enough air upstairs where there again, call it chunky rain, a little bit of a sort of a, a mix out there in portions of the hill country, and that'll be the situation into tonight. And then it does look like rain chances may start to pick up a little bit late tonight, first part of the day tomorrow, and then all that will start to move on out of here from west east, and we will have some sunshine to finish things up tomorrow afternoon, and temperatures will be Oh, about 10, almost 15 degrees warmer tomorrow, but still on the nippy side throughout the day uh, tomorrow. And uh, high temperatures yesterday got up to 84 here in town, 91 in Pleasanton. Of course, it stayed cooler in the hill country. And then today, whole different story. 52 degrees is the forecast high temperature today. Everybody's going to be staying definitely on the chilly side and also of course, remember yesterday how the dew point temperatures and therefore the humidity had gone up about 20 degrees or so from Sunday. Now today they have dropped down about 30 to 35 degrees compared to yesterday. So obviously much, much drier air out there allowing temperatures to drop down, but it's going to stay chilly all day long. Chilly breezy 50 at noon showers. It is going to be windy and we'll only make it up to, like I said, 52 degrees showers and uh, windy conditions throughout the day. Then tomorrow we'll have some rain in the morning and it will start to we'll see some sunshine by the afternoon. We start off 49 degrees and then clear on out. Now with those clear skies, we're not going to have a blanket tomorrow night into Thursday, so that will allow temperatures once again to drop a little bit cooler down to 45 up to 68. Beautiful through the weekend. And the other thing to take note of all of those numbers are pretty much below their respective normal temperatures, the highs and the lows. Oh, wow, so we went from pretty hot to, yeah, to pretty a very cold. warm October to it's finishing up October. Fantastic. Great on Saturday. Heading out for trick or treating. I remember the last time we had a uh, Halloween on Saturday mm -hmm. that it kind of we had some showers that moved through and kind of put a damper on things. But That's this is going to be beautiful out there. Awesome. This is great news. Yes, it is. Thank, Thank you, Mike. 452, 44 degrees. And coming up next, we're checking out this year's leading nominees for the American Music Awards. This morning, we're looking at nominees for this year's American Music Awards. Also, Taylor Swift is celebrating another milestone for the latest and what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I got the mojo deal. Rapper Roddy Rich and The Weeknd, the leading nominees for the American Music Awards, tied with eight nods apiece, and they're both up for Artist of the Year against Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, and Post Malone. The show will air live from downtown Los Angeles on November 22nd on ABC. Speaking of Taylor Swift, she's still the queen of the music industry. Her album Folklore just became the first album released this year to sell more than a million copies. This is it once again tops the Billboard 200 album chart for an eighth week. And only one album sold more than a million copies last year. Any guesses? Yup. Taylor Swift with Lover. Try to play cool. On the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, a second week on top for 24K Golden's Mood, featuring Ian Dior. The song is a rare genre buster, popular on pop radio, alternative radio, hip hop radio, TikTok, and more. Whitney Houston, the first solo artist from the 90s to have a video reach a billion views on YouTube. I Will Always Love You was a massive hit when it came out in 1992. The Grammy award-winning song from the Bodyguard soundtrack topped the charts for 14 weeks. Only three other 90s acts have billion view videos, Nirvana, Guns N' Roses, and The Cranberries. And happy birthday today to John Cleese, the Monty Python star is 81, while Kelly Osbourne is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Not going to name names, but a couple people in the studio now are attempting to sing Whitney Houston. Emphasis on attempting. Okay, time right now. Did I three my mic? Two. <coughs> Marcus wants to know if we can dispatch EMS for an earache. <laughs> no. 457, 44 degrees. And still ahead on our next half hour, we're going to introduce you to a local woman who has a passion for feeding birds at Woodlawn Lake and has earned her a pretty quacky name. Hit game Pac-Man from the 80s making the jump to the real world. Details ahead in Tech Bites. 
Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One week to go until Election Day, the presidential candidates sparring on the home stretch of the campaign. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. That story coming up. Well, some of us have been complaining about a lack of uh, truly fall-like weather around here. Well, this morning, Mike Osterhage is saying, bundle up, buttercup. <laughs> Very true. Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 27th. <laughs> it is 44 degrees at San Antonio International, and it's a little damp out there, so it feels probably even a little bit colder than that. Yeah, but it's it's a nice change, right, Mike? It's oh, gosh, I love it. Yeah, but by, when you step outside this morning, it's like, whoa, you know, it's not just cold. It, it It's cold. Yeah, so, warm up your car a little bit. Normal low temperature, by the way, is 57 degrees, and we may drop down another uh, notch or two, but we've got some clouds out there, and uh, relatively speaking, fair amount of humidity, two points at uh, 40 right now. And there are a couple of sprinkles around the area, and the temperatures today don't even give above, get above the graphic that says today. We're going to be staying in the uh, the low 50s all day long, and uh, probably steady overnight because of the, the cloud cover. And we'll have a couple of sprinkles out there uh, throughout the day. The aquifer did go up two tenths of a foot in the past 24 hours, and the allergens, mold, and ragweed are both on the low side. And... We have a new, not a new, but a graphic. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Wind chill temperatures. Yeah, they are definitely showing up right now. A couple of sprinkles uh, right down there around Atascosa, Wilson County sliding up in toward Bear County. But off here to the west, the uh, G whiz this morning. Yeah, that's a little frozen precipitation out there mixed in with some of the, uh, the light sprinkles in northwestern uh, Edwards County and northern Valverde County. Everything sliding up to the north. It, and again, it, I gotta say it is a G whiz because it's not sticking anything like that. Air temperatures though are down to freezing right now in Rock Springs and a couple of more of those little uh, light showers. So we will have some uh, light rain around here. Wind chills though, yeah, we haven't seen this graphic in a while. 28 lost maples, 39 in town, 30 is what it feels like at Bernie stage and it's not going to improve all that much. We do have some gusts out there as well. Just to add that extra little bite to some of these temperatures. So cold, windy, a couple of sprinkles this morning, and then chilly showers, windy. Can you get figured out? Justin had posted that yesterday that I put that on the graphic. So cold start and then some sunshine tomorrow, mid 60s. So still on the chilly side, and then another very cold morning on Thursday weekend. It's looking great. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo and I just got a push alert on my phone. I thought that was I thought that GCNS was for uh, the uh, Groucho Chaplin in Seinfeld. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, <laughs> still uh, no, the highways look pretty good, but we do have that uh, major accident. The MV Ped still in the clearing stages there. Thirty nine hundred block of Thousand Oaks. That's so going to be just east of Thousand Oaks and Wetmore. So watch out for emergency vehicles there. Other areas looking pretty good, like 604 at Hausman. However, damp roads out there. Make sure you give it some extra time this morning and general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout the morning commute. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. A record 64 million Americans have already voted early, or in, by, uh, early by mail or in person. That number exceeds the total number of early votes in 2016. Meanwhile, the coronavirus pandemic is continuing to shape the final sprint of the presidential campaigns. ABC's Elizabeth Chelsea is in Washington with the latest. One week to go and a record number of votes already cast, the presidential candidates sparring over the election's defining issue, the pandemic. The bottom line is Donald Trump is the worst possible president, the worst possible person to try to lead us through this pandemic. He said that he doesn't do these kind of rallies because of COVID, you know, because of no, he doesn't do that because nobody shows up. That's why. COVID-19 hospitalizations hit records in 16 states last week, and deaths are now rising in 27 states. Yet during three packed rallies in Pennsylvania Monday, President Trump continued to dismiss the toll of the virus that has now led to more than 225,000 American deaths. COVID, COVID, COVID. That's all they talk about, the fake news. Later at the White House, the president stood side by side with the newly confirmed Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. You solemnly swear. Neither wearing masks, even after the last event for Barrett proved to be a super spreader. After the president's chief of staff claimed Sunday the virus cannot be controlled, <laughs> Joe Biden firing back, vowing his administration will get control of the virus. The White House chief of staff 
Mark Meadows went on television to admit to the country that the administration wasn't even trying, trying anymore to deal with the pandemic. And look, folks, I promise you this, I'm never going to give up. Both candidates targeting the critical state of Pennsylvania, where a record number of people have voted by mail. The overwhelming majority of those voters registered Democrats, while Trump insists his supporters will deliver on Election Day. Who is going to vote? Nationally, early voting records continue to be shattered with more than 64 million Americans voting so far. That's approaching half of the total votes from 2016. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And a reminder that early voting continues through Friday and those sites will stay open until 10 p.m. each night, giving voters more time to get to the polls. And we've already beat records in Bear County for voter turnout. According to statistics from Bear County, more than 29,500 people cast a ballot yesterday. It brings the total to 465,014. Well, a family is searching for closure and answers after their loved one was killed in a hit and run over the weekend. A family of 24 year old Alex Reyna says he was killed while on his way to work. Police say around 740 Saturday morning, Reyna was driving west on I-10 near the 37 interchange when a woman in a 1997 green Honda SUV switched lanes. Police say the woman then jerked the SUV crashing into Reyna. His Tahoe crashed into a large metal sign, killing him instantly. The Honda crashed into a guardrail. Police say the driver walked away from the scene. This person needs to turn themselves in. I don't know who this person is, but they need to turn themselves in. I just want the, the peace and justice for my husband. If you saw or know anything about Saturday morning's crash, please call police. When the driver is caught, she is expected to be charged with failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. And time now is 507 and 44 degrees. Well, with people already starting their holiday shopping, the Better Business Bureau warning about a spike in online scams. Plus, they may be ducks, but they seem happy as a lark. Thanks to one woman who keeps their bellies full on a regular basis. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And taking a look at with live cam, Mike says it's, it's G, C, and S day, grilled cheese and soup day. I think that's appropriate. We are ready for soup. It is 44 degrees. Uh, definitely grab that jacket because you will need it longer than this morning. We'll be right back. Mornings were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis. When considering another treatment, ask about Zeljans, a pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis when methotrexate has not helped enough. Zeljans can help relieve joint pain and swelling, stiffness, and help stop further joint damage, even without methotrexate. Zeljans can lower your ability to fight infections. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections like TB and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms or are prone to infections, serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zeljans for RA may increase risk of death. Tears in the stomach or intestines and serious allergic reactions have happened. Don't let another morning go by without asking your doctor about the pill first prescribed for RA more than seven years ago. Zeljans. Welcome back. It's 512. Better Business Bureau warning about a surge in online shopping scams. ABC Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, online shopping is surging, and so are online purchasing scams. 38% of scams reported so far this year were related to online shopping, compared to 24% last year. And 80% of consumers say they've lost money, many on purchases made through Facebook. Whitney Houston's classic version of I Will Always Love You joins an exclusive club. It's the fourth song from the 90s to reach the one billion mark, the first from a solo artist. The 1992 hit was featured in the film The Bodyguard. Finally, some real life Pac Man. A virtual board sits on a 200 square foot maze in Illinois that was carved out to look like the arcade game. The front loaders are driven remotely by players in color coded hats. The board was recreated by engineers at Caterpillar to mark the company's 95th anniversary. Those are your tech bites. That is so cool. Is. I used to be great at Pac Man, probably the yeah. only video game that it's I was good at. It's one of the ones I really. Dunk at. What, really? Mm -hmm. 
I loved it. Yeah. Well, now here's the comeback, so we'll see. Let's, uh, you do you do Pac-Man, yeah. I'll do, what were the other ones? Missile Command, Asteroids, all oh, those. Oh, I was horrible at those. Uh -huh. See, yeah. so we balance things out pretty well. <laughs> Teamwork. Five, 513, 44 degrees. And let's take a look outside with TransGuide this morning. There's 35 at Randolph. Things looking pretty okay for 513 in the morning. I know there was a couple of areas that were wet, so be careful when you head out. Yeah, a few drops on the lens there. 515, a local woman always has the crowds eating out of her hands at Woodlawn Lake. Feeding the birds there a passion for her. It even has earned her a pretty quacky nickname. So our Katrina Weber introduces us to what some people call the duck lady. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, or even if it's a goose, chances are it has been on the receiving end of Rebecca Flores' kindness. Since June, she's been a regular around the roost at Woodlawn Lake and often has this audience eating out of her hands. Some will, some will not. The pigeons obviously will not. She visits several times each week, bearing gifts of mostly crackers and romaine lettuce, bonding with the birds. I feel good being able to give, and because I'm able to give, they give me their love. Some people have started calling her the duck lady. I've always been a cat and dog lover, mostly dog. But it wasn't until I started to come here uh, and they kind of like befriend you. Feeding her feathered friends at first was just a pastime for Florida, something she did during the coronavirus shutdowns. Now it's become a passion. Julie, Julie. One bird in particular won her over. A goose called Julie who at first attacked but as the cell phone video shows, learn to come on command. Man, she she just gravitate to me. And she knew I had treats for her. Julie, though, seems to have flown the coop. Flores hasn't seen her in weeks. Which is kind of odd. But I looked for her all along the banks of the uh, lake, and I asked everybody I know here. She's worried about that bird, hoping nothing bad has happened. But if and when she does return, Flores has her favorite snacks ready while also keeping the rest of her click clucking. <laughs> Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Oh, I love that video of Julie. Ho hopefully that duck's okay. Yeah. Hopefully. 518, let's check traffic right now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And we have another incident. Uh, this one is where a vehicle uh, drove into a building and apparently is stuck there. So we're moving over to uh, the north side there, Hebner at Lock Hill 7. Now watch out at the intersection. And that's another very bit busy intersection for the morning commute. So you're going to see a number of emergency vehicles there. Hebner at Lock Hill Selma for a vehicle that uh, struck a building. Right now, take a look, 604 at Hausman, no problems there. And I-10 Dominion, we'll get that stream up and running for you. And 35 at Randolph, you see a steady stream on those southbound main lanes. Definitely moisture on the lenses. Not too bad for this time of the day, right? Uh, could we see drizzle all day, Mike Osterhage? Yeah, we'll have some uh, light little sprinkly showers around throughout uh, most all of the day. And probably looks like they may be picking up a little bit even going into tonight as far as uh, the coverage of some of these uh, light showers. It's not going to be a lot, but just sort of adding to the, the nice chilly temperatures. Boy, it sure was gorgeous, that sunset. Yeah, it's very pretty. I don't think we're going to have anything as far as any spectacular sunrises or sunsets today because a lot of clouds out there. Nothing is showing up on this camera lens right now, but like uh, Marcus pointed out, we do have some on uh, some of the lenses, so there is a little bit of moisture out there. And yes, it is freezing right now at Rock Springs. Kerrville has a little bit of uh, light rain being reported. We've got these couple of showers uh, that have started to move into the uh, southeastern side of Bear County, sliding up to the north. A lot of what, you know, some of those little specks on the lens and everything may just be a little mist hanging around out there too light to be picked up on radar but obviously there is some and then out in the hill country and again rock springs is at freezing and yes that is a little bit of mixed precipitation out there call it some chunky rain if you will it's not going to do anything it's just sort of a, a g whiz type thing and there are a few more of those showers uh, down to the south heading in toward bracketville everything's sliding up to the north and again we will have some of this throughout the day and that's what this computer model does indicate 
and perhaps even a little bit mixed up there in parts of the uh, the hill country. It's not going to stick or anything like that. And watch how this goes into then tonight. And some of this may again start to pick up a little bit in intensity as well. We'll have some rain at the first portion of the day tomorrow, and then that's going to move on out of here. And we'll see some uh, sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow, so that will warm us up. But that only gets us up to the mid 60s tomorrow, which is still well, well below the uh, the normal high temperature. No complaints, though. Here's what it looks like on the uh, satellite and radar picture. And again, some of that uh, eh, sort of mixed precipitation out there north and west of the uh, the hill country. And that covers a good chunk of the northern portion of the state. Some snow up there in the panhandle as well. And a lot of the country is covered with some really cold temperatures. Not as cold as yesterday. Remember, there were some negative numbers uh, up to the north. But 18 right now, Casper, 11, Wichita, and even down to 28 degrees in Oklahoma City. And that's the uh, air that we were in yesterday those 70s, but that's getting pushed on out of here. The low is moving across here, and as it moves in a little bit closer, that's what's going to sort of enhance some rain later on tonight and tomorrow, but then that continues to scooch on out of here, like I said, throughout the day tomorrow, and that will bring an end to uh, some of that rain. And it's not as though we see a big, huge surge. We stay kind of in the, the light orangey yellow colors, so it's not like we're seeing a big return of any overly warm air. We will get back up almost to normal readings by the uh, the end of the weekend, but um, really, really nice weather. Cool mornings, Jack in the morning, and maybe a light jacket in the afternoons going in toward the weekend. 50 today at noon, couple of showers, windy, and we'll still keep a few showers around. Windy conditions, that's it. 52 for high temperature today. Again, about 5 degrees below the normal low temperature. That's our high. 49 tomorrow, up to 64 with some morning rain, and then down to 45 on Thursday morning. Look at that. Lots of stuff. There may be a couple of morning clouds hanging around here over the weekend, but uh, just beautiful. And the big old blue moon on Halloween, Yeah, that's going to be spectacular on Halloween. It's going to be a that. great night. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful just, night. Just about weekend. perfect fall weather, right? Mm -hmm. And setting the clocks back and everything else. All in one weekend. I can just win the lottery. That'll be it. You know, <laughs> then sweep. everything would just line up perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Keep us posted on how that works out. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't show up, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. 522, 44 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, we're going to have a first look at Disney's newest animated film, Raya and the Last Dragon. Here are your lottery numbers. Mike Oster, H pick three, nine, nine, five, fireball three, daily four, nine, nine, four, nine, fireball six. Cash five, we have six, seven, nine, 24, 35, and your Texas two-step, 15, 24, 28, 32, bonus ball 17. Plenty of music in today's entertainment news with a little movie magic thrown in. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The judges have ruled in favor of The weekend. The singer has received eight nominations for this year's American Music Awards. Rapper Roddy Rich also nabbed eight nods, tying The weekend for top honors. My whole life, I trained to become a guardian of the Dragon Gem, but this world has changed. Here's your first look at Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon, about a warrior on a quest to find a dragon that can save her kingdom from evil forces. Kelly Marie Tran and Aquafina lead the voice cast of the animated adventure, due in theaters March 12th. Andrea Bocelli's new recording of the classic You'll Never Walk Alone is the first single off the legendary tenor's new album, Believe, described as a collection of uplifting songs that have sustained him over the years. Believe is due out November 13th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527 and 44 degrees. Glad you're with us. Still ahead on GMSA Election Day, seven days away. Look at how the candidates are making those last minute pleas for votes as tens of millions have already cast their ballots. Plus, wildfires are raging across parts of California this morning, causing thousands to leave their homes. And it's back. KFC once again offering that famous fried chicken scented Yule log. We'll tell you how you might be able to get one. 
Hi, good morning. It is October 27th. Thanks and, for joining us. And it's definitely a jacket, maybe umbrella kind of morning, Mike Oster Hage. Yeah, um, not a lot of heavy rain around the area, just a few uh, sprinkles. There's nothing showing up in this picture as of right now. There are a couple of trans guide cameras that uh, Marcus is going to show in just a couple of minutes that do have some drops on the lenses. Yeah, 44 in town, dew points at 40. We've got northeasterly wind, 10 miles per hour, and it is gusting from there. And here's uh, some of these light little sprinkly showers and uh, yeah, just a couple of them. One's about to move across I-10, right uh, just east of exactly downtown. And then there's also a lot of light mist out there. Too light to be picked up on radar. Out in the hill country, yep, a little bit of mixed precipitation in uh, northwestern Edwards County, northern northeastern Valverde County. Temperatures are down to freezing right now in Rock Springs. Of course, that's not sticking, but it's just sort of, uh, I like to call it chunky rain out there, sort of a, a gee whiz type thing. And more of these uh, light little showers around off there toward Brackettville. And we will see rain be it very light, maybe starting to pick up tonight throughout much of the day, just kind of off and on. It won't rain constantly, but there will be some of those showers out there. And we've got some wind chill temperatures, still 39 at the airport, 38 Canyon Lake, 26 is what it feels like right now at Lost Maples and some wind gusts on top of that and it's going to be breezy throughout the day. So again, cold, windy, some sprinkles. We are going to have uh, chilly showers today off and on windy conditions. Yes, it is a grilled cheese and soup kind of a day, definitely and big bowl hot oatmeal this morning sounds really good. Cold start tomorrow, some sunshine in the afternoon. We'll still have some leftover rain overnight and into the early part of the day tomorrow. Then we get up into the mid 60s and fantastic this weekend. Just couldn't ask for a better fall weekend for Halloween, setting the clocks back everything. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. You got some things to talk about, Officer Trujillo. That's right. Right now, the highway is not too bad, but we do have this motor vehicle that ended up in a building. So we're moving into an intersection that uh, tends to be kind of busy uh, for the morning commute. Hebner, Lock Hill, Selma. That intersection uh, right now, you have a number of emergency vehicles there tending to that scene. Once again, a motor vehicle went into a building there. Right now, 35 is Space Center. These are some of those drops on the lens that Mike's talking about, but those long turns and curves throughout your morning commute, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas and general application of the brake and the accelerator. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police are working to arrest drivers of more than 100 vehicles that were seen racing on the northwest side overnight. That racing was happening around 11 o'clock last night in the parking lot of Bear Academy near the intersection of Bandera and Hillcrest. So far, police say officers have detained about eight drivers. They say the drivers were keeping eggs in their cars to throw at police vehicles. We're told that one of the sergeant's vehicles was hit by an egg. Police are still monitoring the situation and more arrests are expected soon. Well, all of those political television, radio and digital ads will soon come to an end. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, today marks the beginning of the final week before Election Day 2020. The 2020 presidential campaign is entering the home stretch. Who is going to vote for President Trump? <laughs> President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden spent Monday in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. I just want to make sure we can earn every vote possible. With one week to go until Election Day, more than 60 million people have already cast their ballots nationwide. I wanted to make sure that there was no delay. North Carolina, a toss-up state according to national polls, has high voter turnout so far. It seems like it's more important than years ago. The COVID-19 pandemic is among the issues dominating the campaign, and the candidates' positions differ greatly. We have made such strides. It's absolutely an amazing thing what we've done in a period of seven months. The bottom line line is Donald Trump is the worst possible president, the worst possible person to try to lead us through this pandemic. Over the next seven days, Americans will decide whether President Trump gets a second term. You know, they call it the great red wave and they're waiting for it. Or if Joe Biden becomes the next president. And you know that that blue wall is going to be has to be reestablished. I'm John Lawrence reporting. More than 30 people have been detained and at least 30 police officers are injured in West Philadelphia. This after a deadly shooting involving police officers yesterday afternoon. Now, police say they were responding to a domestic call when officers confronted a man identified as Walter Wallace, who was reportedly armed with a knife. Police say the man was shot multiple times by two officers after Walter did not adhere to calls to drop that weapon. Hours after the shooting, a group in West Philadelphia broke windows and vandalized vehicles. 
Stocks continue to fall as COVID-19 cases surge and stimulus is nowhere to be found. The Dow, NASDAQ and S&P 500 will all try to make up ground today after finishing down Monday. Dow dropped 650 points, having its worst day in weeks. Energy, industrial and financial stocks among the worst performers of the day. So here's one less thing to worry about in 2020, murder hornets. So you probably heard about them earlier this year. And last week, scientists in Washington captured one of the flying terrors, put a radio tracker on it and tracked down its nest. Then they spent the weekend pumping foam into the hollowed out tree where the hive was, wrapping it in plastic and filling the chamber with carbon dioxide to kill them. However, some captured hornets will be used for research. Entomologists say even though they're pretty sure they've knocked out the first nest of Asian giant hornets discovered in the U.S., there's no guarantee there aren't others. Right now it's 536, 44 degrees. Halloween will be a little more interesting this year thanks to the light of a blue moon in the night sky. Just ahead, we're going to tell you if there's a chance you will ever see a moon that's actually colored blue. And this morning we get an update on those major wildfires burning in California, forcing thousands of people from their homes. And taking a look outside with live camera, refreshing 44 degrees for those of you who have been waiting for this cold front like us. Uh, but it's going to stay pretty cold for the rest of the day, so be prepared for that. I'm going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. 540 now to the major fire is still burning in Southern California, fueled by the worst wind emergency of the season, forcing tens of thousands of people to flee their homes. ABC's Megan Tevrizian has more from the front lines. This morning, multiple fires ravaging parts of Southern California. Howling winds and dry conditions fanning this rapidly growing blaze in Orange County. The so-called Silverado fire exploding Monday, growing more than 7,000 acres in just hours with 0% containment. Hundreds of firefighters facing roaring flames as they try to force the fire back from the freeways. But fueled by powerful Santa Ana winds gusting up to 70 miles per hour, firefighters say they're helpless to stop the spread until the wind dies down. The best thing we can do is try and forecast where it's going. ABC's Kaylee Hartung was on the front lines when conditions quickly worsened. These tropical storm force winds are making the flames here uncontrollable. Right here, the 133 freeway, this roadway is the only thing separating these incredibly hot flames from thousands of homes. This is a tough fire. We're, we're, we're experiencing winds, very high winds, very low humidities. So far, more than 150,000 people across the region have been forced to flee their homes. <laughs> Families grabbing what they can with little time to prepare. Our priority right now is getting people evacuated and out of the path of the fire. Overnight, California's governor securing assistance from FEMA for more resources in hopes of gaining the upper hand in the coming days. Southern California Edison says a power line may be to blame for starting the Silverado fire. The power company says it's investigating. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. And time now is 541 and 44 degrees. Do you love the smell of KFC's 11 herbs and spices? You're in luck. We'll tell you about their chicken scented fire log that is back by popular demand. 545 in your morning consumer headlines. The pandemic leading to a boost in board game sales, in particular Monopoly. Toy company Hasbro reporting a 21% jump in gaming sales. According to Hasbro's earnings release, branded Star Wars and Mandalorian toys have also delivered strong revenue growth. However, Hasbro's overall revenue dropped about 4% because of TV and film production delays. Still, the company's CEO says they are expecting a good holiday season. And there are probably a few words that come to mind when you think of a crackling fireplace, warm, cozy, and maybe delicious. Well, that's what Kentucky Fried Chicken wants you to think when you see KFC's now famous fried chicken scented 11 herbs and spices fire log. Yes, it's a real thing, a log that smells like chicken. Apparently it's been a big hit. It's sold out two years in a row. 
And who needs chestnuts roasting over an open fire when you have that savory scented chicken leg log, right? Okay, so you can get your own at select Walmart stores and on walmart.com. All right, now we have to check availability because they have been very hard to find in the past. I've never seen them before. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've talked about them right All here right. on the morning show. Sounds good. Well, to make Halloween this year seem a little more Halloween-y, uh, some will be celebrating and possibly trick-or-treating. <laughs> Under the light of a blue moon. This morning, it's a word, guys. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's official. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this morning, we're taking a look at when these kinds of moons happen and if you'll ever be able to see an actual blue colored moon. <laughs> Most people have heard of the phrase once in a blue moon when referring to something that doesn't happen very often. But an actual blue moon is traditionally defined as the second full moon to happen in a single calendar month. In this case, our second full moon and now blue moon will be on Halloween night. The first one happened during the first week of this month. Sometimes though, a blue moon can also refer to the third or fourth full moon in a single season. According to earthsky.org, this will be in the year 2048 when a monthly blue moon falls on January 31st and a seasonal blue moon on August 23rd. So while having nothing to do with the actual color blue, astronomers say there is still a possibility to see a blue colored moon in your lifetime. While they may not be a full moon, there are situations where particles in the Earth's atmosphere like dust or smoke can bend the light the moon is reflecting to us here on Earth. Scientists say particles of a certain size can scatter out the red light that we see, creating what appears to be a blue colored moon. And because of the same phenomenon, you can also see red or orange moons as well. You're looking for the next blue moon after Halloween. The next seasonal blue moon will be August 22nd of next year. And a real quick look of those KFC fire logs on Walmart.com. Out of stock again. Already. Mm -hmm, but they have a button where you can get an in-stock alert. Oh, okay. Well, sign up. In-stock alert. There you go. We're ready to go. <laughs> Check now. traffic right now. <laughs> How's it looking, Officer Marcus Trio? Well, we still have that uh, one accident uh, in the clearing stages. That's that motor vehicle building accident, Lock Hill, Selma, Hebner Road, uh, up on the north side. Other areas uh, looking pretty good, but watch out for emergency vehicles there at that location. It's a busy intersection during the morning commute. 35 Space Center so far, no problems there, despite the uh, sprinkles there on the roadway. And as we move on to some other areas, uh, there we go. We can get this working for you as we move on to some other areas to show you other trans guide cameras 1604 at military traffic moving along fairly well with no problems there i-10 and callahan looks can be deceiving it appears from this camera shot now keep in mind the camera is elevated quite a bit over the roadway that the roads are dry however just in case both hands on the wheel put away those distractions those cell phones those coffee cups and so far no increases in the traffic here 1604 at houseman so take a look there 410 highway 151 also, some sprinkles on the lens, which means those uh, entrance and exit ramps are bound to be a little slick this morning. Thank you very much, Marcus. One of the things that got us last night, Mike, was the wind. Yeah. Is the wind still a factor this morning? Yeah, still uh, kind of breezy. Got some wind chills to deal with. By the way, the next monthly blue moon is not going to be until August uh, 2023. How does the song go? Blue moon, you saw me stand. Yeah, you can't sing any more than that or we have to pay a licensing fee. You're done. We did. Aww. Yeah. So you're saying I can't That's sing. I didn't say that part. <laughs> That's what he said. That I heard, him. See, I see, heard him. him. It actually hey, wasn't bad, though, we're, Mike. We're it was looking affirmation. forward to it in the commercial break. Thank you. So, hey, she's a good liar. We love her. Uh, beautiful <laughs> picture yesterday. We had all those uh, clouds hanging around here. A little bit of sun tried to peek on through. It's a great shot there. Uh, Marcus showed some of the uh, moisture on some of the, the camera lenses. Nothing on this lens in particular. And talk about the wind. Yeah, it's uh, creating a wind chill. Doesn't take much when you get temperatures this cold, but it feels like 27 in Kerrville, 36 Ball Verde, 30 at Burning Stage, and 26 is the wind chill right now at uh, Lost Maples. And there are a couple of little sprinkly showers out there. This is what radar is picking up. And as you can see, one is coming just into the uh, south side of town and then up there uh, by the airport as well over on 10 on the east side and out in the hill country. Yeah, we've got a couple little spots of uh, call it some chunky rain, a little bit of uh, maybe some sleet that's mixed in with some of this rain because temperatures in Rock Springs right now are at freezing. Um, doesn't mean it's sticking or anything like that. Again, it's more of a gee whiz thing on radar, but uh, 
it's just a good example of how darn cold it is out there. We will continue to see some scattered rain around the area throughout the rest of today. And yeah, there could be a couple of uh, couple of little spots with some of that mixed precipitation out there in parts of the hill country. And that'll be the case throughout the day. And it may actually in the overnight hours sort of pick up a little bit in coverage and, and perhaps a little bit in intensity. And that's going to clear on out of here after some morning rain tomorrow and we'll have a lot of sunshine in the afternoon and they yes, asked that will get us up into the mid 60s for a high temperature tomorrow but that's still way below normal but boy after a warm october no complaints mm, really anybody justin doesn't like the uh, cold weather though Justin Horn doesn't uh, 50 couple of showers windy uh, at noon today and then a high temperature of only 52 degrees well below the uh, the normal low temperature which is upper 50s mid to upper 50s tomorrow we start off in the upper 40s and a couple of more showers left over the morning tomorrow and then we'll start to see some sunshine 64 degrees another cold morning actually both Thursday and Friday morning is still going to be chilly when you're down in the 40s and then just 50 on Saturday but just a spectacular weekend Thursday Friday well tomorrow afternoon then through the weekend and again that blue moon on Saturday Halloween set your clocks back so if we did soup and grilled cheese last night what do we eat tonight tomorrow night any other culinary just change the just change the cheese around change the, the change the soup change well, the cheese you, had the, you mentioned the chicken Cheese. Che uh, cheesy chicken tortilla soup. Mm -hmm. I've got a good recipe for that. Okay. I mean, just think of the different soups you can do. Maybe some chili. Okay. Um, try a little Swiss cheese and you know cheddar mixed in on a grilled cheese. Oh, that sounds that, good. So. Well, I've got Great my options. I've got groceries on the way, and tomorrow night is loaded baked potato soup. Oh, that, that, that sounds, sounds that good. sounds good too. So we're set up. So I'll try to bring in some leftovers if yes. there are any left. <laughs> It's only you. There's leftovers. So. Now there's there's <laughs> 552, 44 degrees. I'm sharing. Good, good. A new comedy out today looks at what happens when a group of friends get together for an over-the-top holiday dinner. We're going to have a preview of Friendsgiving next. Happy Thanksgiving. A simple dinner turns into a food farce in Friendsgiving. How hot is my wife? Lower the chocolates. They can see your breasts, oh. baby. As truth is often stranger than fiction, one might wonder how much of the movie is based on real-life holiday dinners. The movie's writer-director isn't oversharing. Oh, come on, Rick. <laughs> come on, buddy. I thought we were better friends than that. Um, it was an amalgamation of a few parties that uh, we had had. So I hope I avoided that question. Does this look vegan to you? No, I did. Uh, it doesn't smell vegan. Because it smells good? Yeah. But some cast members are open about their turkey day disasters. No turkey. I just just didn't didn't know how to do it. So we didn't have one. Um, uh, it, it went completely wrong. It was so dry and crisp. Um, it was like it was it was like crispy turkey chips. Um, so I ordered pizza, which was delicious. One year I tried to took a goose. Uh, I don't know because of like, you know, general delusions about my own ability and geese are uh, like almost all fat. So uh, we and I, I like I put I got a recipe and we did a bunch of stuff where you kind of like you blanch it in hot water and all this stuff. Anyway, it produces so much fat, like inches and inches of fat, which later I made uh, goose fat uh, like French fries from. So it, there was a happy ending to that story. Well, maybe I don't want to spend the day stuffing my face with sugar and regret. That's the whole point of Thanksgiving, Molly. Sugar and regret. Deep frying my turkey in Hollywood. I'm Rick Damagella. We are in the final week of early voting. Remember, polls are open from 8 in the morning till 10 in the evening. Friday will be the last day to cast a ballot early, and then Election Day is one week away, November 3rd. We have all the info you need right now on our website at ksat.com. When it comes to buying or selling a home, one of the most important things to have is a quality inspection. Just ahead on the morning show, what experts say you should be looking for and the questions you should be asking before hiring anyone. And Marcus will be back with another look at the roads. We could have some problems out there due to some slick streets. You're looking at drops on the lens at 35 and around. But the most important number, bottom right of your screen, it is 44 degrees out at the airport. Could we get any colder this morning? Mike's coming up. We're seeing the ramifications of potentially letting off the gas um, in El Paso and other communities. So I think uh, we just got to keep that at the forefront.
Local officials sending out a warning that the coronavirus can easily come back to our community. It comes after key data points show an increase of COVID-19 here in Bear County. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, be aware it is cold out there. It is grilled cheese and soup day, right, Mike? <laughs> All right. <laughs> live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It's Tuesday, October 27th. Thanks for joining us. We were outside when that cold front came in yesterday afternoon. How'd that go? It was it was nice yeah. because we knew it was coming. And so right. I was helping my little girl with some of her homework outside and it was just like, oh, here it comes, here it comes. And then we were so excited we went for a run after. Well, it was a beautiful night for cold weather lovers. I cracked the window last night, put an extra blanket on the bed and getting out of bed this morning, probably one of the hardest things I've done in the last couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, it, it was nice. And, and if you were outside like you were yesterday, I mean, it went from really humid still here in town about two o'clock and then, you know, temperature dropped down about 10, 15 degrees. And then it started actually getting chilly to be outside if you mm -hmm. just went out there with a uh, coat and don't forget your coat this morning because it is downright cold out there and we do have some uh, there's nothing showing up in this picture but we do have some light sprinkles around the area so definitely damp roads Marcus is going to show you more on that with some of the trans guide cameras that are showing some of those uh, raindrops on there 26 is what it feels like in Lost Maples 28 Kerrville 34 Ball Verde and the wind chill right now is 38 out there at the airport it feels like 36 at Randolph you know, so wind is is about 10 15 miles per hour a little bit gusty at times and again we do have some of these little sprinkly showers this is what's showing up on radar a few of them right here in downtown over there 35 over by 1604 in the northeast side and some around 281 and some heading up uh, 281 they're uh, almost in toward 410 so again roads are damp and want to take a little extra time to warm up the car as well there is some mixed precipitation in and around Rock Springs. Temperatures at 32 degrees, so very cold pocket of air obviously sitting on top of us. And it's not sticking, but it's just sort of a, as I say, a gee whiz type thing. And there may be some of that uh, mixed precipitation, a little bit of sleep mixed in throughout the rest of the day, and then some more showers off to the west. And uh, as far as temperatures, we may fluctuate a degree or two this morning, but Relatively speaking, we've got some very high humidity and also the cloud cover is helping to keep temperatures pretty steady. We can't drop down that much further from where we are right now. And then we're not going to warm up all that much at all. Maybe five to 10 degrees, 48 today at noon, going for 52 for a high temperature. And again, in some cases, we're not even going to get out of the 40s, especially in portions of the hill country. We'll still keep some windy conditions around here, as well as a few sprinkly showers. We have got a beautiful forecast coming in here to finish up the month of October at the weekend. A prize winner. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. What it's not a prize winner, Officer Trujillo, is what's going on on the roads in a lot of places. They are slicks, and so folks are going to have to slow down, give it some extra time this morning. We already have uh, one motor vehicle that struck a building. That's still being cleaned up there, right there. Lock Hill, Selma, and Hebner, so keep that in mind. Other areas, not too bad, but 604 there at Military. Now, way out there on 604, we're starting to see drops on the lens as well. That means those elevated roadways, those long turns and curves will be slick. Remember, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Put away those distractions, those cell phones, those coffee cups, and both hands on the wheel this morning. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a suspect in a shooting and robbery. It happened at an apartment complex on Vera Cruz near South Brazo Street around 2 this morning. Police said the suspect broke in and shot the man living there in the hand. The victim ran off to call for help when officers showed up at the apartment. The shooter was gone. The victim was taken to the hospital with injuries and is expected to recover. Local health officials are warning Bear County to follow COVID-19 guidelines as San Antonio sees an increase in cases, hospitalization, and the positivity rate. Mayor Ron Nirenberg reported 151 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday, bringing the seven-day moving average up to 192 cases per day. 248 people are now hospitalized and 91 are in the ICU and the positivity rate jumped to about 7%. That's up from 5.8% last week. The county and school risk level is now at moderate. San Antonio is even taking in COVID patients from El Paso because the situation there is so dire. So far, we've taken in five patients. 
According to Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, the plan is to transfer 15 to 20 patients daily to cities like San Antonio, Austin, Houston, and Dallas over the next few days. El Paso is also under a curfew to try to prevent cases from spreading as the holiday season nears. This morning, all staff, students, and families at the Pre-K for SA East Education Center are awaiting test results after a COVID-19 outbreak. The center says four staff members and one student tested positive for the virus, but no additional members have had a positive test since. The center will remain closed through today, and the Pre-K for SA CEO says the results of those tests will determine what the next step will be. She also says she, that the center is working closely with Metro Health to keep everyone safe. The pandemic is halting operations at many nonprofits dedicated to helping troubled children and teens, leaving families in need struggling to find help. One organization, Roy Moss Youth Alternative, has kept its doors open 24-7 since the pandemic began, and the organization says it's seen an increase in families using its services. That includes the emergency shelter and the drop-off center, which allows children to stay overnight if they need to. Anxiety and depression, the numbers are astronomical through the roof since pandemic. Kids, adults, families, no one is immune from the increased pressures of anxiety and depression. Organizers say the biggest goal is encouraging families to find a positive role model for children to look up to. You can read more about these services on KSAT.com. Researchers have found that ultrasounds can show the damage COVID-19 has on a person's heart. Doctors in New York looked at ultrasound scans of 305 people's hearts. They found that 190 of them had structural heart damage. Researchers found it gave a fuller picture than the routinely run blood test to look for heart damage. They say ultrasounds could help doctors start treatment early and help patients recover more quickly. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help to find those responsible for the murder of Eric Mendoza. This happened just over 10 years ago, October 21st, 2010, in the 5000 block of Village Path. During the incident, residents heard several gunshots and the sound of a vehicle speeding off. Mendoza was found shot in his vehicle and died at the scene. Crime Stoppers now guaranteeing a $20,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest in the case. Call 210-224-STOP. And time now is 607 and 44 degrees. World Series continues tonight up in Arlington. We have a preview of what could be the final ball game of 2020. They may be ducks, but they seem happy as a lark. Thanks to one woman who keeps their bellies full on a regular basis. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And taking a look out with live cam, a cold 44 degrees this morning. If you haven't had time to dust off your jacket, now is the time. You're going to need it all day long. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. Case at 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. The decorative skulls you see everywhere during Day of the Dead are called calaveras, and the most popular calaveras originated with a political cartoonist and printmaker, José Guadalupe Posada. Born in 1852, Posada lived through some of Mexico's most turbulent times, and his first political cartoons were published when he was just a teenager. They were so successful, they forced a governor out of office, but Posada's new enemies forced him to flee town. In 1888, he moved to Mexico City, and in the following years, he helped publish tens of thousands of illustrated flyers, or volantes. These single-page tabloids were like our late-night talk shows. They were filled with biting political humor, and at a time when few could read, Posada's Calaveras became popular throughout Mexico. So popular, many believe he raised the country's political consciousness. And when the Mexican Revolution was just beginning, Posada published what would become his most famous image, La Catrina. At the time, many of Mexico's ruling class were obsessed with acting and looking European. To mock them, Posada put a fancy French hat on the Aztec's female god of death. His statement, rich or poor, we all die. Death is the great equalizer. As far as Posada, he died poor and mostly forgotten in 1913. But in the following decades, his influence on the great artists of Mexico became undeniable. Today, many consider Posada the father of modern Mexican art. And La Catrina has become the icon of Day of the Dead. Six thirteen. Welcome back to GMSA. A local woman has the crowds out of Woodlawn Lake eating out of her hands. 
Feeding the birds there is a passion for her and it has earned her a pretty quacky nickname. Trina Weber introduces us to a woman some people call the duck lady. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, or even if it's a goose, chances are it has been on the receiving end of Rebecca Flores' kindness. Since June, she's been a regular around the roost at Woodlawn Lake and often has this audience eating out of her hands. Some will, some will not. The pigeons obviously will not. She visits several times each week, bearing gifts of mostly crackers and romaine lettuce, bonding with the birds. I feel good being able to give, and because I'm able to give, they give me their love. Some people have started calling her the duck lady. I've always been a cat and dog lover, mostly dogs. But it wasn't until I started to come here uh, and they kind of like befriend you. Feeding her feathered friends at first was just a pastime for Florida, something she did during the coronavirus shutdowns. Now it's become a passion. Julie, Julie. One bird in particular won her over. A goose called Julie, who at first attacked. But as the cell phone video shows, learn to come on command. Man, she she just gravitate to me. And she knew I had treats for her. Julie, though, seems to have flown the coop. Flores hasn't seen her in weeks. Which is kind of odd. But I looked for her all along the banks of the uh, lake, and I asked everybody I know here. She's worried about that bird, hoping nothing bad has happened. But if and when she does return, Flores has her favorite snacks ready while also keeping the rest of her click clucking. <laughs> Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now at 615, we're going to talk to Mike about those temperatures in the mid 40s here in the city coming up. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. But for now, let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Stephanie. And folks, we still have that accident in the clearance stages. Luckily, everything on the highways, folks seem to be slowing down and uh, not uh, getting involved in any accidents. However, we still have this one at the intersection, so uh, causing some delays. Hebner at Lock Hill Summer, so keep in mind. This is what you'll encounter as soon as that stream comes back up. Tenant Dominion moisture on the screen. That means moisture on the road. Just spot everywhere we see here in the driving area. So just make sure you put both hands on the wheel and of course uh, put away those distractions. Thank you, Marcus. And definitely a jacket or coat. Oh. Yes, indeed. And, you know, it seems like, uh, Marcus, I'll, I'll defer to you, that there's a lot more cameras that are picking up a lot more some moisture out there. Yes, and we're starting to get more vehicles out there, so now it's just a waiting game. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, it's it was just sideways a, pretty quick, couldn't it? Yeah, okay, and we haven't had a lot of, you know, heavy, heavy rain to wash all the dirt and oil and everything you guys talk about off the road. So, yeah, it's slippery out there, and boy, is it cold, and that little bit of rain makes it feel even colder, and temperatures are basically going to stay steady where they are because we, relative to the temperatures, we've got a lot of humidity in the cloud cover that holds things pretty steady, and then not going to warm up all that much, maybe into the low 50s. Some areas will not get out of the 40s later on today. Still a few showers and still on the uh, breezy side. Love this picture. Beautiful day. I don't know if this was yesterday or not. It was posted uh, just a few uh, hours ago, but because there's a lot of sunshine out there. there. Some folks did have some sunshine out in toward Kerrville. And well, I'll tell you one thing. If you want to take a drive out toward the hill country, this weekend is going to be spectacular for it. All right, this lens this camera's not showing anything as far as rain out there by uh, 410 I-10, but we do have, again, some of these light little sprinkly showers. This is what's detected on radar. A lot of it is just uh, some mist out there. The radar doesn't pick up, but all this is sliding up to the north, and there's more out toward the hill country. Yep, there has been a little bit of mixed precipitation out there. Um, I like to refer to it sort of as chunky rain. It's not going to stick or anything like that, but temperatures are at freezing in Rock Springs. So we've got this really cold, cold pocket of air, obviously, over uh, portions of the hill country and even further north of there. And that's what's supporting some of that uh, freezing precipitation out there. And then a little bit more off uh, around Brackettville, out to the west, everything kind of sliding up to the north. And we will continue to keep this around throughout the rest of today. Perhaps a little bit of uh, mix out there in parts of the hill country. And you can see this is sort of the, the southern edge of that big pocket way out there in toward the uh, kind of western portion of the state that has more of the wintry precipitation because that that cold pocket is sitting out there to the west. We keep uh, some of the light rain around here and maybe even a couple of spots of a, a heavier shower or two 
overnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. And then throughout the rest of the day, all that's going to work its way off to the east and things will start to clear out then. And then that starts the beautiful. I mean, today is, I think, beautiful as well, but going in toward the weekend, it's going to be spectacular. Quick check on Zeta. Uh, winds 70 miles per hour and it is forecast to become category one storm throughout the rest of today and then make that big turn. The front that moved through is helping to divert this away from us and it's going to take it up once again right up there, make landfall right around Louisiana and move into the southeastern United States. But it's not going to really have any impact on our weather at all. 50 today at noon, couple of showers. It is going to be breezy throughout the day and a high temperature. That's it, 52 degrees. The normal low temperature is 57. Just to put it in perspective, we are way below where we should be. And all of these numbers are actually below their respective normal temperatures. No complaints here. 45 starting off Thursday morning, 48 Friday, lots of sunshine. Like I said, a spectacular weekend. It's going to be gorgeous on Halloween for trick or treating. Nice cool temperatures it's going to cool down kind of quickly at night. The blue moon full moon on Saturday and Sunday. You wake up and get that extra hour. <laughs> the sun goes down. Oh, nice. Before six o'clock. It's going to be an awesome weekend yeah. all around. Yeah, a lot to look forward to. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 619 44 degrees and coming up it's sentencing day for alleged sex cult leader Keith Rainier facing the possibility of life in jail. Find out more in today's GMA first look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with circle K and GMSA. I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein with nutrients to support immune health. When they're sick, they get comfortable anywhere and spread germs everywhere. Wherever they rest, protection. Nothing kills more viruses, including the COVID-19 virus, on more surfaces than Lysol disinfectant spray. Lysol, what it takes to protect. An official message from Medicare. Did you try it yet? Comparing plans? Oh yeah, this sure can change year to year. I found lower premiums. And lower prescription costs. And those new insulin savings. Hundreds of plans, $35 a month. That'll save you money. So, uh, Mark? On Medicare.gov now. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Comparing plans really pays. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. In this morning's GMA First Look, Keith Ranieri, founder of secretive self-help group Nexium, will be sentenced, facing up to life in prison for his role in the so-called sex cult. Prosecutors say Ranieri, known as vanguard to his followers, was a con man and predator who used blackmail to force women to be his slaves and have sexual relationships with him. Ranieri hadn't spoken publicly since he was convicted of sex trafficking, racketeering, and conspiracy charges last year. Keith Ranieri. An inmate at a federal prison. But this weekend, with the help of followers who still support him, he released a podcast from behind bars saying he's just trying to do good. In this particular case, I'm given a spotlight that is far greater than my personhood. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what Keith Ranieri's alleged victims and supporters are saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Saramdi, ABC News, New York. Online shopping is surging and so are online purchase scams. 38% of scams reported so far this year were related to online shopping compared to 24% last year. And 80% of consumers say they have lost money, many on purchases made through Facebook. Through Facebook, okay. Whitney Houston's classic version of I Will Always Love You joins an exclusive club. It's the fourth song from the 90s to reach one billion views on YouTube and the first from a solo artist. The 1990s you hit was featured in the film The Bodyguard. And now some real life Pac-Man. A virtual board sits on a 200 square foot maze in Illinois that was carved out to look like the arcade game. Front loaders are driven remotely by players in color coded hats. The board was recreated by engineers at Caterpillar to mark the company's 
95th anniversary. That is pretty cool. To Major League Baseball, the LA Dodgers won game away from winning the World Series for the first time since 1988. They get a chance to win the series tonight. The Tampa Bay Rays will try to force a game seven. First pitch scheduled just after seven this evening up in Arlington. Very cool. Could all be over very soon. That's right. I'll try to be. I'm going to try and stay up and watch and it. Try. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> it's hard and with yeah. our hours. Yes, it is. <laughs> Time now is 6:25 and 44 degrees. With one week left until the election, both presidential candidates making their final push. We'll see how an increase in coronavirus infections is impacting things on the campaign trail. Also coming up, we're going to look at what you should ask or look out for when you hire someone to do a home inspection. As we go to break, if you're just now waking up or tuning in, yeah, we've got some raindrops on the lens out there. There's 35 at Topper Wine. Marcus will steer you clear of any accidents. And Mike will get you updated on what kind of jacket you need this morning, but you definitely need one. Police are cracking down on the people who made these donuts. Some arrests overnight in connection with street racing. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. One week to go until Election Day. The presidential candidates sparring on the home stretch of the campaign. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. That story coming up. Outside with live cam. Forget a wind chill. Look at the actual temperature right now. That's more than sweater weather. We're at 44 degrees right now, and that's right here at San Antonio International Airport, rather out there. That's all right. Thanks for joining us. It's Tuesday, October 27th, and that cold weather that we've been talking about and hoping for, it's finally here. Finally here. Going to stick around a little while. Of course, it's colder in the hill country. Anything besides rain out there right now, Mike? There's been a little bit of mixed precipitation way out in northwest portions of the uh, the hill country. And just to put it in, by the way, you said forget about windchill. No, don't forget about windchill because it's out there. <laughs> so uh, we are 30 degrees colder than what it was at this time yesterday. Obviously well below normal by anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees. Yeah, 44, dew points at 40. So obviously much drier air is coming here, but relative to the temperature, we've got a lot of humidity and with the cloud cover, that's not really going to allow temperatures to drop down at all anymore throughout the rest of the morning. Wind out of the north at 12 miles per hour and then it is gusting at times. So talking about those wind chill temperatures, it's down to 25 at Lost Maples. 28 is what it feels like. Kerrville, 36 Bull Verde, 36 at Randolph. Yeah, it's cold out there. Warm up the car and we do have a little bit of rain. Uh, not much, if anything, I mean, over there by 281 at uh, near 1604, a couple of showers are showing up, but there's a lot more that's showing up on the trans guide cameras. Marcus is going to uh, show those in just a couple of minutes, a lot of and just kind of damp on the ground on the roadways, especially. So you definitely have to take it easy. And there's some of that mixed precipitation we had earlier uh, this morning moving through Edwards, Valverde County, and there's a lot of it way off out there heading in toward uh, the western portion and the central and western portion of the state. So cold Cold, windy sprinkles and boy you need something nice and warm this morning and later on today my suggestion the grilled cheese and soup we'll just call it GCNS and cloudy showers windy and may actually start to see a, the rain pick up a little bit late tonight early tomorrow morning then we'll see some sunshine mid 60s and that's going to be the start of a spectacular stretch of weather to finish up the week and go on into the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Trujillo, you've had a lot of a uh, lot of accidents out there so far. Well, the only accident we're following is just this one up here okay. on the northwest side. Uh, we're looking at that uh, intersection there, Hebner and Lock Hill Summit. That's where the vehicle went into the building. Uh, that's still in the clearance stages out there. But other than that, things are, uh, folks are moving just a little bit more cautious this morning due to the slick conditions out there. Now, 410 Northwest Military, you see no problems there. We do have moisture on the lens there, 35 at Randolph. Just remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Mark. Marcus, thank you. New this morning, a parking lot of a Northwest Side school is where more than half a dozen young people learned a lesson overnight. San Antonio police arrested them after breaking up what they call an illegal street racing. Uh, Katrina Weber is live in the parking lot of the Bear County Academy, Bandera and Hillcrest. Katrina, good morning. We understand there could be some pretty serious charges involved. Well, that's right. Good morning. Uh, yeah, in addition to the charges related to racing, some of those people potentially could face charges of assaulting an officer. Police say as they arrived to break this whole thing up, there were some people who were throwing eggs at them, hitting a sergeant. Now, although things are relatively clear in this parking lot, now 
there are still some remnants of what happened overnight. You can see donut marks and streak marks all over the pavement here. A few hours ago, there were cars everywhere. Police say that there were more than 100 that took part in the racing overnight, spinning circles and drifting in this parking lot at Bandera and Hillcrest. Once police arrived around 1130 last night, those people made a run for a different finish line. Most of the drivers were able to speed away from here. However, police say one of them made it easy to catch him when he crashed into a patrol car. They say some of them also tossed eggs as they left this area. Police told us this was actually the second group of racers who they arrested in this one night. In all, they have at least eight people in custody. The police told us that they were expecting to make even more arrests overnight. They say that this, uh, this racing has been an ongoing problem throughout the city. Reporting live on the Northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Election Day is now officially one week away and already a record 64 million Americans have voted early by mail or in person. And the pandemic pandemic rather is continuing to shape the final sprint to the finish line of the presidential campaigns. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Good morning. The coronavirus pandemic is front and center on the campaign trail with just one week to go. And with Americans heading to the polls in record numbers, the U.S. is now averaging nearly 70,000 new coronavirus cases per day, the highest level yet. One week to go and a record number of votes already cast, the presidential you candidates sparring over the election's defining not issue, not the pandemic. The bottom line is Donald Trump is the worst possible president, the worst possible person to try to lead us through this pandemic. He said that he doesn't do these kind of rallies because of COVID, you know, because of, no, he doesn't do that because nobody shows up, that's why. COVID-19 hospitalizations hit records in 16 states last week and deaths are now rising in 27 states. Yet during three packed rallies in Pennsylvania Monday, President Trump continued to dismiss the toll of the virus that has now led to more than 225,000 American deaths. COVID, 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 that's all they talk about, the fake news. After the president's chief of staff claimed Sunday the virus cannot be controlled, <laughs> Joe Biden firing back vowing his administration will get control of the virus. The White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, went on television to admit to the country that the administration wasn't even trying, trying anymore to deal with the pandemic. And look, folks, I promise you this, I'm never going to give up. Nationally, early voting records continue to be shattered with more than 64 million Americans voting so far. That's approaching half of the total votes from 2016. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. You have four more days to vote early in the 2020 presidential election in Texas. Yesterday, nearly another 30,000 voters cast their ballot in Bear County. And the Bear County Elections Department reports that just over 465,000 people have voted early and in person so far. Now until Friday, early voting locations will be open from 8 in the morning to 10 at night. Early voting ends this Friday, October 30th, and Election Day is now a week away on November 3rd. You can find a sample ballot and other election resources on the Vote 2020 page of KSAT.com. We have an update to a story we told you about yesterday morning. Bear County Elections Office says voters who are deaf can get an interpreter at two sites. That's the Elections Department over on Frio Street and the San Antonio College voting site. Yesterday, we told you the nonprofit No Barriers Communications wants the county to get iPads to every voting site to use video remote interpreters. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says she hopes to grow the number of sites with interpreter assistance and says the county plans to buy more devices. However, she says there will not be time to do so for this election. More companies are trying to increase access to the polls for voters. Hertz says it will give away one free day when customers reserve a car for two days on November 2nd or 3rd. Other transportation companies are also running deals on Election Day. Both Uber and Lyft are offering discounted rides to the polls. And if you live in San Antonio, you can always ride a VIA bus for free. Just show your voter registration card to the bus driver on Election Day. In your other headlines, newly confirmed Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett expected to start her life term on the bench today. U.S. Senate confirmed Justice Barrett last night. President Donald Trump held a ceremony for her at the White House where Judge 
uh, rather Justice Clarence Thomas administered the constitutional oath of office. And here's what Justice Barris had to say about how she would adjudicate as a member of the highest court in the land. The oath that I have solemnly taken tonight means at its core that I will do my job without any fear or favor and that I will do so independently of both the political branches and of my own preferences. Before Justice Barrett can take her seat on the bench, she must now take the judicial oath of office specific to the Supreme Court. She's expected to take that oath in a private ceremony with Chief Justice John Roberts. Officials in Philadelphia say they are investigating what led up to a police officer shooting and killing a black man, Walter Wallace Jr. The shooting happened yesterday afternoon when police responded to a call for a man with a knife. Wallace's father told the Philadelphia Inquirer that his son struggled with mental health issues and was on medication and says Wallace's mother was on the scene trying to defuse the situation. After the shooting, protesters marched in the streets for justice. Some clashes between police and protesters broke out, injuring about 30 officers, according to WCAU in Philadelphia. Some Philadelphia City Council members are now demanding that body cam footage of the deadly shooting be released immediately. California bracing for another day of strong winds and dry conditions as fire crews battle two wildfires that have rapidly intensified. One of the fires in Orange County started yesterday and is now burning near thousands of homes in the city of Irvine, just south of Los Angeles. Officials say two firefighters have been critically burned and nearly 100,000 people are now under evacuation orders. This was ABC News' Kaylee Hartung reporting in Irvine when winds brought flames within a few lanes of a neighborhood. These tropical storm force winds are making the flames here uncontrollable. Right here, the 133 freeway, this roadway is the only thing separating these incredibly hot flames from thousands of homes. Meanwhile, workers at the Nixon Presidential Library in Yorba Linda, California, are hosing down the roof of the former president's home to prevent it from burning down. And time now is 640 and a cold 44 degrees here. When it comes to buying or selling a home, we all know it's important to have a quality inspection. After the break, things you should be looking for and the questions you should be asking before hiring anyone. I believe a homeowner should uh, have an inspection scheduled every two years, preferably in the springtime after the winter season, because our homes take the most abuse in the winter. While a professional home inspector will best know the most common problem areas to check, you, the homeowner, should be doing your inspections yearly to maintain your home. If you don't have any clue what to look for during your own inspections, make sure you're available and around when your home inspection is being conducted. A good home inspector will point out the problem areas as you come across them and give you some tips on how to maintain your home. Because I instruct my buyers on how to maintain their house and what to look for in the future. So if they do need me, I'm available. But my situation is I kind of trained all the new home buyers into being uh, amateur inspectors. A typical home inspection should take about two to two and a half hours for a 2,000 square foot home and they should be checking your home from inside out. Your home inspection will include checking your foundation as well as the mechanicals of the house such as the HVAC system, the plumbing, electrical, even the roofing system. On the interior, they're going to check your appliances and they'll also, for an extra charge, check your water quality, check for radon, as well as termites. As soon as you purchase a home, there is often a short window to get your inspection done. So look for an inspector as soon as you start looking for a house to save yourself from additional stress and make sure they are licensed and certified from one of the national agencies. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. It is now 645. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And right now, as we take a look at the uh, trans guide cameras, there's 281 Hildebrand. That turn, the turning turns and curves, rather, just like this. That's where you want to use caution this morning in areas just like that. And we're, let's see, having some issues there with the uh, trans guide cameras. But the roadways are slick out there, so just keep that in mind. 35 at FM 1103. Not too much going on there on the access road main lanes. You can see heavy volumes of traffic on those southbound main lanes. Here in the downtown vicinity, 35, 37 interchange so far, looking pretty good. Good news. All right, not to play favorites. Okay. Okay. But, but this is favorites. one of the best. 
pictures yeah. that we have received. We, we were admiring it during the commercial break, and oh, you have to yeah. say it out loud, Mike. <laughs> Well, grandson's first Halloween. I don't know if parents knew that this that grandparents did this to the little one, but hey, what the heck, you know? Like like they say, kids and grandparents have a mutual enemy. It's a, but uh, right. look at that Aww. trick or treat, and then smell my feet. So That's cute, pretty darn. And adorable. the expression on his face, I know, right? just <laughs> perfect. So, huh? and when that resurfaces for his the first prom date. Oh, yes. no. That's what you take those pictures for, right? Exactly. Yeah, That's a little works. mild extortion never hurt anybody. <laughs> Parents' goal is to just, you know, kind of not embarrass, but yeah. yeah. Hey, my question for you real quick. Sure. Uh, when was the last time we were this cool around here? Has it been since since like April or something? You know, uh, yes, I have not checked specifically. Okay. I will for the end of the show, but okay. yeah, it's been way back since, mm -hmm. because when we got down uh, into what, the uh, low 50s, a while back, it was back going toward the end of April last wow. year. So now yeah, I'll double check that. But uh, we've got, uh, as Marcus pointed out, a lot of rain on some of the cameras in and around town. Nothing is showing up in this picture right now. And notice how we've got some of these just sprinkly showers. So this right there in southeastern uh, Anascosa County, right coming up 37. And a few more of these little showers are showing up on the south side of town. And a lot of mist and drizzle around here as well. Yes, there has been and still is some mixed precipitation out there in northern uh, Edwards County. County, right around Rock Springs. Temperature is right at freezing right now. I, this is not sticking, but it's just kind of a, a gee whiz and a good example of how cold the air mass is, especially out in toward the hill country and then further up to the north. That's where there's kind of a pocket of very cold air sitting right there. So we're sort of on the edges of it and then a little bit more uh, off to the west of us. And we'll continue to keep some of this light rain around throughout the rest of today. It's not really going to mount to too much as far as the total, but it's just gonna, it's just basically gonna help to keep things really chilly because when you have damp air, it actually conducts the heat away from your body more so than dry air does. So that's why you always feel colder on a day like this when you've got a lot of humidity and a lot of moisture in the air. So like I said, we'll continue to keep some of this uh, rain around throughout the day. Maybe a little bit of mix out there in parts of the hill country. And there could actually be a few uh, pockets of well, some decent rain, especially overnight, and then we'll have some leftover rain in the morning tomorrow, and then that will start to clear out, and that's the start of a beautiful stretch of weather. So just to compare, high temperature yesterday got up to 84 degrees. That was right around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 91 in Pleasant, and 94 down around Laredo. Stayed cooler in the hill country, and then today we are 30 degrees cooler. High temperature of uh, going for 52 here in town, and uh, right around mid 50s around much of the area. And look at the numbers around the country. Yeah, it is definitely cold out there. So the forecast today, we'll make it back up to 50 today at noon. And with the showers, windy conditions, I'm staying on the cooler side with all the cloud cover around here in those showers. So 52 for high temperature tomorrow. Overnight, pretty much temperatures almost stay steady. We stay in the upper 40s, get up to 64 morning rain, sunshine in the afternoon. And it's going to be pretty cold the next few mornings. As a matter of fact, all those numbers on that graphic are below the respective normals, the high and the low. And Thursday through the weekend is just almost undescribably beautiful. It's going to be nice, perfect fall weather, cool in the morning, beautiful in the afternoon, great for trick or treat on Saturday. And that was that was my next question. I went, I know we'll talk about it as we get a little bit closer, yeah. but is Rooney ready for trick or treating or Halloween this year? Yes, she is. We're you know, we're doing it differently, but of course. but yes, uh, and I'm glad the weather will work out and also for the people who don't like the cold weather, so at least, you know, They'll get something to look little, forward to right. as well. Something for everyone. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Right now at 650, 44 degrees, you're watching GMSA. And you may know the importance of the air quality outside, but what about inside your home? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to share some things you may not be thinking about that could help you breathe a little easier. And will you turn back outside with live cam? Yeah, it's definitely on the chilly side out there. News you need to know before you go still to come on GMSA. Some drivers may have thought it was time to make the donuts, but San Antonio police had different plans. They say it was time to go to jail. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police made more than half a dozen arrests overnight in connection with what they call illegal street racing. It happened here in this parking lot at Bandera and Hillcrest. The police cracked down around 1130 last night. They say they found more than 100 drivers in this parking lot spinning, doing things like donuts and also leaving street marks throughout the parking lot. 
As soon as police showed up, they say that the crowd dispersed, people sped away, but some of them also hurled eggs at the officers hitting a sergeant. Police again did arrest about eight people. They say one of those drivers made it especially easy because as he tried to leave the area, he ran into a patrol car. Police say this racing is an ongoing problem throughout the city. Reporting from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're now just one week away from the general election, and this year San Antonio voters will decide the fate of three sales tax propositions. Those propositions include the continuation of pre-K for SA and the establishment of a workforce program. City Hall reporter Garrett Burging will join us in the studio to break down what you need to know before you cast your ballot. That's at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's check on what you need to know about the roads. Here's Marcus with the latest as of 5 till. And we do have an accident coming in. On 410, being reported there, uh, 410 Callahan. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that major accident. Other areas like 37, 35 in the downtown area, not too bad. And Highway 90 Military looking pretty good. Mike. Bundle up before you uh, step outside this morning. Warm up the car a little bit. We have wind chill temperatures down in the uh, 30s and even 20s in parts of the hill country. Still a few light little sprinkly showers. A lot of it's too light, but uh, most of the trans guide cameras are showing drops on the lenses. So the roads are definitely damp and temperatures aren't going up all that much throughout the day. We will just barely creep up into the low 50s. Still breezy all day with a couple of showers, some leftover rain tomorrow, and then a spectacular stretch of weather into the weekend. Oh, sure is. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 9.